think it was my 13th birthday, a fella took me down to the stables to have a look at the horse and that's when I fell for horses and uh, started working with trotters at the age of 13 on the weekends and school holidays and then I ventured to race horses at Flemington. Uh, but my father wouldn't allow me to, to be an apprentice. He wanted me to go to Camperdown in Victoria, the Western District. His mate had horses with a fellow called Vic Maloney and that's where I ended up going. I left home when I was 14, so I've been in horses all my life since. I come out of my time, I got a bit heavy and a fellow called Peter Homan, who used to be a Warrnambool, he was up here training. And uh, actually Nifty Wilson said, once you get Peter Ring and go up there, where the you know, weather's busy, you probably lose a bit of weight. And, so I did and I spent 20 years here and had a lot of success and yeah, I was very happy I did. Then uh, I had a bad fall here and that was the end of my career and I went back to Melbourne and went to form for Gerald Ryan. I went to Mayfield Smith, um, Graham Rogerson until Lloyd uh, approached me and I took the job there and I was there for 12, 12 years with Lloyd. It cost a million and a half dollars a month to run the place. Uh, there's a lot of Young kids that come out of there have been good trainers, it was just absolutely, everything was spot on for horse and it, they had learning schools that fed had come and everybody be, so you know, the very educated young, young kids come out of the place and it was just magnificent. I was there with uh, two Melbourne Cups, uh, learned a lot, hell of a lot off the vets and Lloyd himself is a very astute businessman. Uh, he was a very hard man but very, very generous. You know, he very looked after you. In the 70s I'd come up here Come up with a bloke called Peter Home, and I thought he had a stable full of horses. He didn't, and he had one. What, geez, what the hell am I doing here? Then I met Brian Jorgerson, and, and uh, he had a fair few horses at uh, Affin at that time, and I just got to and ride and work. And from then on, we were just a great combination. And we, he moved his uh, establishment down to White Rock. Uh, the horses were trained by Neef at Kilvard and myself. We had a lot, of, a lot of success for years. And when I left here, went back to Melbourne. For, 20 years and rang Brian up, so I've had enough on coming, can you give me a couple of horses? He goes, yeah, not a problem. So we're coming there, well, he's just spent 250,000 on horses to upgrade us, so, you know, we're looking forward to the, the carnival coming. So I've got a good team behind me, you know, with Tiana, my stepdaughter, she'll be taking over the range surely, because I'm ready to retire. But it's a family business, we all work together, and it's, you know, very good, but the quality of the horse we've got at the moment is very good. Like. A couple here now, not Carnival also. I'll go to the paddock and we've got five sitting out in the paddock ready to come in, so I'm looking forward to it actually. Duke's, um, he's probably the dearest one we bought and paid, paid um, 10000 for him. He came over from um, Ireland, he was a winner in Ireland, and Liam Howie, the, the um, assistant trainer there, rang me up and said, This horse goes good, Lloyd wants to sell him. He said, But he's cooked in the brain, you've got to try and work his brain back out, which we have. Like he's only been in the sprint because he can stay. And, you know, we're very happy to have him in the stables. And Jure's the leader, 300 to go, a length in front of Chavot, two lengths in 10th focus, then came Monkey Magic, Misty Guys, missed the leader and perhaps it's Jure in front but getting a bit wobbly. On the outside, Chavot's almost level, Misty Guys running on strongly, but Chavot on the outside and on the inside, Jure. Jure and Chavot, they come to the line, I think Jure kicked and won. He's going actually terrific, that's the race we're looking forward to being in, but um, he pulled up a bit scratchy this morning, so I don't think I'll run him because I've got a bit of future for the horse because he can stay and he's only been sprinting, which Liam Howe, the assistant trainer in Melbourne, couldn't believe that I got him sprinting and going so well, so uh, there's plenty of time for him. Voltag is a dream to have in the stable. She's got a lot of problems, but um, we work him out. And this probably will be her last year she'll go to stud. And, um, but she's for $1,000 we pay for our Facebook. Um, she won 90, nearly 90000 now, so. Yeah, she's a dream to have around. Voltaic is coming to the extreme outside. 200 to go. Agarwald's the leader. Trying hard on the outside is Lord Archer. Voltaic's down the outside. Deputy Dan still boxing away. Agarwal in front. Voltaic at the 50 markers trying to peg it back. Agarwal in front, but Voltaic. Voltaic moves up, takes the lead. I was going to bury a trial and I thought, well, she may as well have a race here. She does go well fresh. She might be a bit short, but she, she's very consistent. She won't, she won't disgrace herself. And actually, she galloped really well yesterday morning on the course proper, so I'm really happy with her.